On this episode of Mike Drop Dallas, we're talking FC Dallas with midfielder Paxton Pomico. We're also talking Mavericks and FC Dallas with broadcaster Mark Followell. And of course, we're talking March Madness, especially women's March Madness with the NCAA Women's Final Four headed to American Airlines Center starting on March 31st. All of that and more on Season 3, Episode 4. So let's drop the mic and let's go. Welcome to Mike Drop Dallas, everybody, the official podcast of the Dallas Sports Commission. Kevin Sullivan here, joined by Monica Paul, the executive director of the Dallas Sports Commission, and our on-air producer, Next Level, Marcus Carr. Monica, I always ask, what's going on at the Sports Commission? This time, I know it's all about the women's Final Four. How's your heart rate? What's happening? Well, I think the heart rate's a little bit elevated, uh, Sully, but I can't tell you how excited I am. Uh, that it's uh, finally here. Um, you know, brackets were announced uh, on Sunday. We dribbled a work day yesterday. Um, really proud of how the community has come out and uh, really supported this. Uh, hopefully, you know, families and supporters of women's basketball and, and youth groups will be able to get out and enjoy some of the ancillary events that are free to the public, such as the bounce on Saturday uh, out at City Hall that'll go directly into Turney Town out, out at the uh, K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center. So a lot of different activations. Really want to give a shout out also to AT&T, uh, AT&T, the NCAA, and Getty Images uh, partnered together for a Title IX celebration that actually started earlier in March. It's going to run all the way through uh, April at the AT&T Discovery District and over 800 plus images of uh, female athletes that have participated in championships uh, over multiple sports. Uh, we've got uh, trophies out there, gold medals out there, a lot of different memorabilia to really celebrate this uh, culmination of the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Um, uh, the bracket just went up outside the Omni, so uh, the, the, they'll be uh, maintaining that as the tournament kicks off this week and uh, things start to progress and people start winning and moving on as we find out uh, who the four teams are going to be uh, taking place here in Dallas. And, you know, this one's also special in that we're hosting the D2 and D3 championships. So uh, excited to welcome those four teams uh, uh, to Dallas, and they'll get to participate on the same court as the Division One athletes at the American Airlines Center. So excited about that. And, and uh, I think our community initiatives uh, court is going down right now <clears throat> out in West Dallas. Uh, uh, at Maddie Nash Davis uh, Park, one of the Dallas Parks and Recreation facilities out there. Uh, just received an update this morning that uh, our Read to the Final Four program, over 5 million minutes read uh, for, for those third graders participating in that uh, uh, program. So by a long shot are going to knock our, uh, blow our uh, numbers out of the water from 2017. But really, I think the one thing that's keeping me up at night uh, right now as we um, sprint to this finish here over the next two, two and a half weeks uh, are really volunteers. And, uh, you know, it takes a village. It's one of the things that we, you know, pride ourselves on um, and uh, really rely on the volunteers in our community to, to step up and help. So we're a little bit short on the volunteers, specifically for Attorney Town and party on the plaza and, and the bounce. So uh, we're hoping to really start uh, hopefully honing in on some of those numbers and uh, dwindling some of those down so that uh, we can have a great representation and everybody from volunteers to staff, players, uh, spectators, kids can, can enjoy the week because uh, a lot of special things. And I can tell you from hosting in 2017 to hosting in 2023, the NCAA Women's Final Four is uh, definitely taking it up to, a, to another notch. That's good. And calling it March Madness is a, is a good uh, place to start. How can people sign up if they want to uh, volunteer some time, whether it's at Turney Town or, or on the plaza or somewhere else in, around the upcoming Women's Final Four? Yes, if uh, you go to DallasSports.org, uh, there is a volunteer button there. And uh, once you go in and register through our Rosterify system, uh, which is our, our volunteer database, uh, then uh, all of the shifts that are left available, the crucial ones being Turney Town uh, and Party on the Plaza are, are there. And really that's a Thursday through Sunday is when uh, those mm -hmm. events take place. But 
uh, even if it's one shift, uh, we would uh, love to have you. And volunteers get a polo, a jacket, a hat, clear bag. So uh, a lot of fun activities too. Now, I know you probably have not had much time to focus on the actual basketball. Your Longhorns are a fourth seed, get to start the tournament at home in Austin. Obviously, they're in the bracket with Stanford, the top mm -hmm. seed there. Also, Indiana, Boo, South Carolina, and Virginia Tech are your other one seeds. We're going to ask Mark Followell later in the program for a prediction on both the men's and women's uh, sides. Uh, how do you feel about your Longhorns? Are you optimistic? Well, I I am I, but you know it'd be almost a dream come true to be able to host the women's Final Four, but then have you know my alma mater and, and team in it. Uh, uh, I'm probably a little disappointed, maybe, of uh, the results from the Big Twelve uh, Women's Basketball Championships and uh, Iowa State beating them, but uh, I think they can bounce back. And uh, um, yeah, I, I'd love to see some burnt orange here in, in Dallas. I don't know if you'd be able to handle the excitement, but I but well, uh, but. But uh, I hope it works out for you. All right, back in a moment to talk FC Dallas with midfielder Paxton Pomichol. But first, over to Rachel with a word from one of our sponsors. The NCAA Women's Final Four is coming back to Dallas March 31st through April 2nd at the American Airlines Center. Don't miss the electric atmosphere and witness the pinnacle of women's basketball. Learn more at NCAA.com slash women's final four. We'll see you there. Thanks, Rachel. And now we're pleased to be joined by Paxton Pomichol, FC Dallas midfielder, homegrown product, born in Louisville, signed by FC Dallas back in 2016. If I'm not mistaken, Paxton, you were 16 years old uh, at, at that point, almost 17. Marcus, I don't know about you, my high school years did not include signing a contract to be a professional athlete. Did yours? They did not, but I, but I, uh, I hope to live up to those expectations uh, as I enter my 20s. It's not too late for you. Paxton made his professional debut in 2017. He was an MLS All-Star for FC Dallas in 2019. Of course, the longest tenured member of the team. Uh, Paxton, welcome to Mike Drop Dallas. Wow, well, th thanks, thanks for having me. I love all the uh, the accolades you're you're telling me about. It's it's nice to hear all those things. But yeah, glad to be here. So Paxton, three matches into the season, how are you feeling about this year's team? Yeah, I think we we have a really good group. Um, we've showcased in the first three games the versatility against three completely different teams, and um, I think the progression has been good. And first game on the road, I felt like we we were the dominant team and. Hopefully we can continue that into our game this weekend against uh, SKC. But um, yeah, I'm I'm feeling good about the squad. Everybody's pretty much healthy and in good spirits and uh, ready to go. Well, we had your coach uh, Nico Estevez on the mic drop uh, last season. Very very impressed with him. He led FC Dallas back to the playoffs in his first season. Uh, how would you des describe his approach? Yeah, Nico is. Um, He's very analytical and um, particular about the way he wants things done, which in, in and of itself is is a good thing as a coach to, to be firm in his beliefs and know what he wants, but at the same time, give us freedom to showcase our strengths uh, individually and, and let guys shine. Um, for example, a guy like Alan, you, you, you give him direction and, and guidance, but at, at the same time, you you give him the ball and let him do what he does best and just create and, and enjoy and showcase what he can do. So I think Nico has a really good balance of, of giving us a, a model, uh, but at the same time, um, letting every individual play to their strengths and, and really let, let the individual create their own, um, you know, moments, but also collectively as a team. So it's, uh, it's finding that balance because you need guys to be able to do what they do individually, but also work together as a team and, and, and that. So. Well, I know all of Dallas was cheering for, for FC Dallas last year, really enjoyed the, the playoff run that y'all had. What did that playoff run do for this team in, in terms of building sustained success? Yeah, I think it, it was a, just a taste of, of what's to come. Um, I think, there's a bit of frustration because I feel like everybody in the organization, especially in the team knew that we, we fell short of our goal. And um, 
yeah, we had a good season and we, we won our first playoff game at home in a while and went to the next round and, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, we went down to Austin and didn't put in a good performance. And ultimately it's when you're in a one game knockout situation like that, it's, it's not good enough. And all of the guys were frustrated because we felt like that was a game we could win. And the game we played them in the regular season down there, we went down there and played really well and, and ended up getting a tie two two, but um, thought we dominated most of the game. And, and so to go down there and just not play as, as well as we should have and, end our season the way we did we were a little upset about that but it it fuels the fire and um it showcases that you know this this team is ready for this year and um has that experience hopefully when when we make playoffs to go in and and not have a one-off game because ultimately you, you can't afford to do that Tex, we're talking also about women's history month being in march and of course the ncaa women's uh, basketball tournament, the Final Four coming to Dallas, uh, April, uh, March 31st through April 2nd. You have an interesting women's history connection in your family and that your grandmother, Anne, uh, back in 1985, became the first woman to become mayor of Louisville. That's, that's kind of a cool deal. Uh, of course, besides Gina Miller, who inspires all of us, and she's a, she's a friend of the mic drop, you have a woman, whether in sports or or in your family and life that in inspires you something to connect to, to, uh, you know, women's history month. Yeah. I think you mentioned my grandma, I would say both of my, my grandparents, um, have been super influential on, on just my upbringing and my life and just on my journey. Um, both of them live within like three miles of, of my parents' house now. So I try to see them as much as I can. And, um, there was a game last year where both of them came uh, together. They're they're good friends, obviously. Uh, one big interconnected family, and uh, they got to come down to the field. And um, it was an earlier game, so it was nice because you know they try to get to bed early and don't like the 7:30 p.m. games and whatnot. But <laughs> they came down to the field, and I got to take a picture with both of them uh, together after the game. And uh, that's to date one of my all-time favorite um, photos on the field on a soccer field that I that I have and um yeah they, they're special uh to me and um yeah they like there's nothing much more I can say but like you mentioned my uh my dad's mom first mayor of Louisville which is which is crazy she's a superstar and then my mom's mom the same she's uh battling her own things now and uh just a rock uh for the family so both of them uh, have been great influences on me I would say yeah, that that's that that's that's cool. Can't forget my mom, of course, but got to shout out the grandma sometimes. So <laughs> absolutely, no, no question, no question about it. Monica and I get we have guests on here and Marcus that bring up Ted Lasso all the time. Sometimes we ask our media guests, you know, what are you watching? What are you streaming? And, and Ted Lasso just came up over and over and over again. And and Gina actually, uh, when she was on, talked about the impact that she thought it had on fans. I always wanted to ask a, a player, do, do the players watch? Do you watch? Does it have any impact, you know, in the, on the, uh, among the team? Do you, do you talk about it? Do you, do you like it? What do you think? Oh, man, I hate to disappoint. I, I have never seen Ted Lasso. Um, my parents say good things about it, but, yeah, for whatever reason, I've just – I've never watched it. Um, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a really big anime fan, so I've kind of been – for the past few years been into that a lot and those are mostly all the tv i watch is anime so um besides that i, ha I haven't really ventured out there's a couple of new shows that i'm uh looking to get into i think the last of us the yeah show with, um what's his name yeah with pedro pascal um i right. really like sci-fi and that kind of stuff but I haven't even heard many guys talk about Ted Lasso in the locker room, so I <laughs> I was already disappointed. But um, no, you're not watching. Back you're, on and no, you guys know. No disappointment at all. We were kind of sick of hearing about it. It's just like everybody kept bringing we're it. We're good. Up. I don't have anything to say about it. Yeah, <laughs> so don't worry about it. And I, I like it. It took me a little bit of time to get into it, but I but I do do enjoy it. Uh, but it's interesting that, to see that to hear that you know what you said about the the players. Of course, you're busy and you got other stuff going on, and I love to hear that you're a sci-fi fan. 
Marcus, what are you yeah, yeah. what are you watching or streaming these days? Marcus always I, has packs. He's always got an interesting one to drop in. Yeah, well, give me a rec. Well, Paxton wreck. just hit on it. The Last of Us. I was I I was hooked on it. I couldn't stop watching. Um, a little disappointed. I have to wait till twenty twenty five until season two. Um, I just that finished, long. Um, yeah, that long. Oh my god. Um. Wow. And I just finished Outer Banks last night, so um, that that was a good one. Um, that was probably my favorite season of Outer Banks. Now, yeah. don't don't forget, uh, Sully and and Marcus and Paxton. You opened up a can of worms here because Sully loves the "What are you watching? What are you streaming?" segment that that we normally <laughs> do, and we haven't done it in a while. So I'm like, uh oh, this may go on for a while. But uh, uh, I've been watching you, so I think the the fourth season is is out so I, I haven't quite finished it but uh, uh very interesting i haven't got to the new season of you but uh i i am excited to watch it and you can't you can't forget you know a lot of the stream that's going to be happening is going to be fc dallas games and uh, march madness in the in the next you know three weeks or so this is true this is true well paxton thank you so much for joining us good luck this weekend in kansas city uh next home game listeners is march 25th at uh lafc Thank you for having me, guys. And now over to Rachel for a word from one of our sponsors. All right. You won't want to miss the action as season two of Athletes Unlimited Basketball takes place at Fair Park Coliseum from February 23rd through March 25th. The world-class roster includes WNBA stars Natasha Cloud, Alicia Gray, Nalissa Smith, 2022 WNBA champion Sydney Colson, and more. All Athletes Unlimited game days will include access to two games, autograph opportunities, and a chance to shoot on the court. Get your tickets today at AUProSports.com. And now we're excited to welcome back to Mike Drop Dallas, Mark Followell. This is Mark, this is your third appearance, yeah. which puts you, you are, this is a landmark historic moment. No one has appeared three times. You're lapping the field with guys like Mike Reiner, who have made two appearances. There's a couple of others. But the last time we had you on was back in July of 21. I was shocked to see that. So a long overdue return. You are our Steve Martin to Saturday Night Live or Tom Hanks, the go-tos. When you know you need a great guest, what do you do? You call Follow Well, the voice of the Mavericks, going back to his radio day since 2001, 2005 as the TV voice. Of course, now on what is known as Bally Sports, also known for his work. Uh, for many years, uh, uh, broadcasting FC Dallas games. We're going to get into that. Of course, he's an Emmy Award winner. What I want to know, Mark, are you the only graduate of Northwest High and Justin who's ever won an Emmy Award? And go Texans, by the way. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful intro, Sully. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, To my knowledge, I probably am the only Northwest High School Texan from Justin, Texas to, to uh, win an Emmy Award. But, uh, yeah. you know, I, I was just in the right place at the right time, I guess. So. Well deserved. We're going to start, of course, March is Women's History Month. Uh, we talked with Paxton, uh, Paxton about his grandmother being the first woman mayor of Louisville. Who is a woman in your life that has inspired you, made history in a way that 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 is meaningful to you as we celebrate the achievements of of women and women in sports this month? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, I think the, the look, there's a lot of answers I could give you. Uh, you know, I could talk about people within my own family or people that I've worked closely with. Uh, you know, I'm like, I, I think this is uh, some might say it's an easy answer, but I think it's a very accurate one. Uh, I've been very, very inspired ever since St. Marshall has came and joined the Mavericks as a CEO. Uh, the first African-American woman to be a CEO in the NBA. Um, you know, she is a captivating orator. She is someone who can inspire and lift you up if you're having a bad day. Uh, we've had some great conversations over the years in terms of just getting more involved in the community and, you know, using your platform and things like that. And, uh, you know, I've had the, the great pleasure to, to co-host a couple of panels with Scent, uh, you know, and a couple of speaking engagements and be the uh, moderator for uh, Q&A events with Scent. And, you know, she's just, she has an amazing story to tell. She has the ability to... Um, you know, share that story in a way that really is very, very inspirational. So there's a lot of things I could say, Sully. Uh, but I mean, that at the at the yeah. surface level, that's who I would pick. That that is that's a great choice. She is she is electric, and we'll we'll get you inspired. And you, if you were having a bad day, you won't after you spend some time with with Sint. Sure. She is a friend of of the mic drop, so we all, we like having her on too. 
All right, let's let's stay on the Mavericks uh, for for a moment. Uh, I enjoy the podcast that you do with Brian Damaris. Uh, they take that with you. I'm not yeah. cool enough to say it properly, but you guys get into very thoughtful analysis and and and, and the use of numbers and data and analytics. So we're looking at you, Mark, Monica, and I here, Marcus, here at the mic drop. We are optimistic people. Mm-hmm. We are gla- This is a glass half full situation over here, and. Obviously, the Mavericks are struggling a little bit right now. We've got some injuries to deal with, but give us reasons for hope in the home stretch here, uh, and and what you could what you see heading into the into the playoffs at, during a time that's a little bumpy. Yeah, well, it's definitely a bumpy time. I mean, you're exactly right about that, Kevin, for sure. Uh, you know, I think that what I would look for is first and foremost they've got to get their most important components back on the team and back on the floor, and that's Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. Uh, hopefully Kyrie's back sooner than later. I know Luca said in an ESPN interview during the game last night, it was also on Valley, but Luca uh, was on ESPN and said that there's no timetable. Uh, there was hope that, uh, you know, that they would be able to practice as early as Tuesday before a Wednesday game to start a road trip against the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, we'll see if in fact that happens. So that to me is, is thing number one. Uh, you know, if you look at the remaining 13 games of the schedule, they're going to have two games against San Antonio, two games against Charlotte, a game against Chicago, uh, you know, you can never count where, as you know, Sully, you can never count where wins are going to come from in the NBA. But playing those teams, given what those teams' priorities are late in the season, you know, hopefully you're going to be able to win those games and then find some other places, you know, to pick up some victories. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of tiebreakers that are still in play. Uh, game against the Lakers later in the week, game next week against Golden State. Those could really be big factors because not only are they going to be games that you need to win just for standings purposes for for – accumulating wins but also from the tiebreaker aspect of things as well so you know i I, look uh the west is very very wide open uh it's very down to be perfectly frank with you compared to years past and so that's why i think that you feel like if you can get there and given the high level talent on your team there's still the possibility of something exciting happening but they got a lot of work in front of them you know i mean there's just there's no way to uh, say it any other way, any other way. There's a mountain to climb out ahead of them, and you know they got to get healthy if they're going to be in a position to do that. So, Mark, let's uh, switch gears and talk a little bit FC Dallas now. First, yeah. uh, the MLS, uh, all MLS games being moved to Apple TV Plus, meaning that you aren't going to be doing all FC Dallas uh, games. So, what will your MLS schedule look like? Well, I've done a couple of games so far for Apple TV. Uh, I've had a chance to do games that have been involving FC Dallas. Uh, the schedule has worked out that way. Uh, my next game will be the weekend of uh, March the 18th. I'll be the uh, voice of the uh, the play-by-play for LA Galaxy and Vancouver Whitecaps FC out in Los Angeles. So uh, the way things will work moving forward, I don't have specific games uh, at this point other than this week's game uh, on my schedule. Uh, there are Maverick conflicts that will kind of keep me out for games here for the next few weeks. And then I'll jump back into the middle of it as the season unfolds. And, you know, maybe there'll be some other games at FC Dallas, but I'll be bouncing around to other places uh, as one of the many, many play-by-play voices just as all part of the talented group of people that are in the new uh, broadcast arrangement for MLS with Apple TV. All right. And we we spoke to Paxton Palmacall earlier. He's optimistic about this season. How good do you think FC Dallas can be this season? Well, it's a year-to-year thing, you know, in MLS. And I think that uh, in the case of FC Dallas this year, uh, they had a great season last year. And now the question is, how can they build on it? So to answer your question, Monica, look, I think they have a lot of the key components back from last year's team that was third in the West and won a playoff game for the first time since 2015. Uh, They advanced to the – or since – they won a playoff game outright, I'm sorry, for the first time in 2015. You know, they did advance against Portland through penalties in 2020, but uh, they won their, had their first outright playoff win since 2015. So they advanced into the next round, uh, lost to Austin, uh, you know, had a good game down there, but came up short in the end. So I think they've got a lot of those key components back, and they've got a chance to be in position yet again for, you know, one of the top seeds in the Western Conference and maybe be able to host a playoff game in the first round like they did last year. Uh, The margins are very small in Major League Soccer, and things can change a lot from year to year. But the signs have been, for the most part, positive so far this year. Disappointing first game, but a great bounce back win in against LA Galaxy. And they went out on the road and and picked up a point against Vancouver the other day. Honestly, they played well enough that I think they could have won that game. They didn't, but they did get a result on the road. So, uh, you know, now they're going to be back home this week to play Sporting Kansas City. So they got, uh, I think they've got, you know, the, the possibility of another really good season. 
Mark, I see you're you're wearing an Alabama cap. I so am. the uh so I, I didn't realize you were a roll tide guy. I, I know when you came on the, for the first time it was March of twenty one and you and Mark is double team me and accurately <laughs> predicted that North Texas would knock out my beloved Purdue Boilermakers in the tournament, yeah. which I'm still I still haven't fully recovered from. Now we're <laughs> a number still one a, seed. Uh, high from it. <laughs> and now we're a number one seed, as is Alabama, of course. Uh, what do you think? If we're going to talk about the women's bracket in a second, but what do you think on the men's side? Do you have any bold predictions this time? You can't look to UNT no. this year, but but what uh, what do you think? Um, well, you know, so the Alabama hat. Now I have a North Texas shirt on. You probably can't see that. You know, I got. A, I've been repping the Mean Green for their NIT appearance this week, and you know, I'm repping my two my my undergraduate school and my graduate school. So okay, uh, I got you. Yes, yes. So I'm in uh, working on a uh, online program for a master's degree in journalism and media studies right now in Alabama. So. Uh, so since they're getting tuition money, even though this makes our friend Brian Damaris very mad that I have a North Texas shirt and an Alabama hat on, and I wore it on the podcast today for Take That With You that we recorded, uh, you know he was he 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 know he knew that it was coming. He, he realized I was going to do that to him today. Right. So, well, and Damaris is a Baylor guy, right? For those yeah. who, uh, yeah, he is. So uh, look, Alabama is a very good team, and I you know. They're deserving as the as the number one seed in the tournament going in. Uh, obviously, with the situation that has involved Brandon Miller this year, uh, you know they're going to face some challenges. I think in the NCAA tournament, they're not going to be look number one seeds as you know when you get into these neutral site situations are never very well supported. Uh, I think once they get out of playing the first two games in Birmingham, they're going to have some challenges on their hand in that regard. Uh, but they are having watched them quite a bit this year. They look to me like they're probably the best team in college basketball. Uh, maybe I gravitate towards them because they play kind of an NBA style. They get up and down the floor quickly. They shoot a lot of threes. They try to get to the rim. They don't settle for too many mid-range shots. And so I think that they play a type of basketball that I'm used to seeing, and I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Kelvin Sampson's a great coach. If Marcus Sasser is healthy down in Houston, they spent obviously a lot of the year as the number one seed, as the number one team in the Associated Press poll. And I think they've got a great chance. Um, you know, so so look, I know that's kind of chalk for me to say that, that right. uh, the top two seeds are the teams I like, but I've watched quite a bit of Alabama this year, and I do think that they're a very, very good basketball team. They've got some challenges in front of them, but they certainly think that they have the talent to uh, win. You know, they just got to avoid a bad shooting night because they are so reliant on three-pointers. And I hope, by the way, that Alabama gave you some some credit for your many, many years in, in media for that media studies degree. Uh, <laughs> The uh, on the women's side, you know, we used to say, "Can anybody beat UConn?" and now we say, "Can anybody beat South Carolina?" Any thoughts on 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 uh, the women's Final Four coming to the American Airlines Center uh, March thirty first? Well, number one, that's very very exciting. You know, when you get a chance to host a Final Four for the men's or women's tournament, I mean, that's uh, you know an incredible opportunity to have your city on the center stage in the sports world. Uh, you know, it's very, very good for the economy and for, you know, from the entertainment perspective for the city. So I'm thrilled to see that the Final Four is coming to American Airlines Center. Um, you know, I, maybe this is the NBA analysis coming out in me, but, you know, something I really like about the women's game this year and something that I look forward towards the Final Four is the best player in the country is at Iowa in Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. uh, I've watched her highlights this year. I know her accomplishments. Uh, I saw the last second shot that she had to win a game of the Big Ten. It was on a Sunday afternoon. I, I forgive me, I forget who the opponent was, uh, but she had a buzzer beater that just absolutely electrified Carver Hawkeye Arena, and it was amazing to see, you know, what the what the reaction was. So, um, if I were going to look at anybody to beat South Carolina, uh, when you have the best player in the country and you have the the, the you know the individual player can make such an impact in basketball, and I know that's more NBA thought press process that I'm saying there, Kevin, but I think that, uh, you know, I would say I always got a chance to beat South Carolina. That's who I think is going to win it is Carolina, South Carolina. But if I was going to pick anybody, I would look at Iowa and then, you know, look, LSU is good. UConn is good. Uh, you know, there's just so much experience as a program and it's just in their DNA to excel at this time of the year. Uh, again, I know it's kind of an easy analysis, but I would think that, you know, Connecticut can't be discounted at this point in time either. That, that, that's for sure. This and probably, uh, 
any other year as well. Well, Mark, yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you for joining us on behalf of Monica Paul and the Dallas Sports Commission. We appreciate Mark coming on. We appreciate Paxton Pomichol coming on from FC Dallas. Thanks to the Mic Drop production team, Daniel Pescura and of Tony Fay PR. Ran over at Vocal Media. We kept him hopping today. Our showrunner, Tony Fay. Until next time, thanks for listening, everybody.